All right, continuation of this call. Uh, we're hooking up our recovery now. This whole back panel here is a micro channel coil and they've got some serious uh, fan on the front. You might not need a subcooler with this because they have such a good, you know, subcooler built into it. So, you know, I'm sure everybody's somewhat familiar with my normal subcooler setup. We are not going to do that today. We are going to uh, hook it up and we're going to try to run it and just see what the recovery does in the process. Uh, we do have a 3 8 to 3 8 so we're going to run a true 3 8 on the inlet side and then we're going to run a quarter out to our tank. We've got 230 pounds to pull. Uh, I don't know that we're going to do it all this afternoon, so we'll get what we can now. We'll finish the rest in the morning. The parts are supposed to be in at 11 a.m. in the morning. So hopefully they actually show up in time, and if, if at bare minimum we can get the repair done, even if I have to do startup on, say, Monday morning or something, fine, so be it. Uh, the, the goal is just to get that far if we can. We'll do the best we can. Ultimately, if it craps out, fails, whatever, everything blows up and you, just, you see this big uh, meteorite asteroid come in, just knock it, it'll be fine. All right, so he's grabbing that. Let's get this. So I'm gonna need to specifically use blue so that all of you out there that think red only for a discharge side, I can I can upset y'all slightly. <laughs> so this, is, this is for all you guys that think only red for the discharge side. I'm using a blue. You're welcome. Bleed this through. Go ahead and open that. Get this turned on. I had really good results the other day. I've already checked the screen. I know that's clear. Uh, I had really good results the other day running this in uh, uh, at full fast. But we're gonna go ahead and move it to closed. Hit start. Let it ramp up. So we decided to hook up to the liquid line because since that valve failed, it's gonna back everything up the, into the side of the system. Normally I would start to pull recovery from the uh, bottom of the evaporator. And we may still do that, because honestly right now, I don't, feel, I don't feel any liquid coming through. I don't like that. So we may go down there and re-hook up and do it down there from the evaporator instead. Oh, you know what I haven't done? I haven't opened the valves yet. I need to go do that now. I'm gonna go open the valves. Let's just go ahead and stop it. And let's go ahead and move down there to the evaporator and we'll pull off the bottom of the evap. Okay, so let's go off. Let's go service into the code. Come up here, go over to analog output. Feed valve, we're gonna go 100%. Enter. Then we're gonna cycle down, go to drain valve, go to 100%. Enter. We're gonna let those actuate open. When they stop, we'll unplug them. And then we're gonna come recover. Ooh, this one's actually down at a legit low point. So a lot of times they put them up there in the freaking riser and so you're not getting the true low point this one we've got legit low point anyway here's our plug for the drain so that won't close now it's opened and stopped come down here the plug for the feed valve which we're gonna replace both of them but the plugs right here now if you don't know something to be aware of they have converted to a different style cable so if you order any modern valves for these things you have to get the cable kit too because it doesn't look like that anymore the new ones look like this so this connector actually comes off the head and then you have to convert everything up here in the harness and so we usually keep the molex from the factory and then we'll just use the old wiring harness as kind of a tie wire it together send it on down the road and it'll work out fine. So I took the cap off. This valve is leaking. I don't know if it's actually got a full front seat though. Let's test it before we get... So it had a little bit. It slowed it down. It's possible though that, you know, with us moving it and actuating it, it'll seal it off. But for now, 
We're just gonna roll with it. We can make it not leak, so I'm not worried about that part. Go ahead and move it over to close. And hit start. And open it up. I hope it don't have to do This is where I normally pull from again. It was just a theory down there. I was nervous that because the feed valve wasn't functioning properly, it might have caused the system to, you know, pump down slightly. That's not the case. Honestly, because the valve couldn't open, it also couldn't close. So ultimately that left us uh, with just everything. Once, every, once the compressor turned off, it left it where everything settled out in the system. So we're moving pretty good. We got a little bit of a rattle, but so far it's okay. That doesn't scare me. We're just gonna let it roll. Um, if it gets to shaking too bad though, we'll turn it down. What we're gonna be monitoring is what does our output pressure do? Because normally with a subcooler on 134, I can keep my output pressure at about 200 PSI with my water-cooled subcooler. So can this air-cooled cooler compete with that in any way? So we're in the process of changing the fan out. Something we do uh, on occasion to get us by, you can pull those leads off and set them to the side and you can still run with just one fan down. I've even had success with two fans down. Uh, it's not really good, but you know, it handles it. Something else that's really good to note is, uh, so, the fans coming off of that contact are all sharing the same indicator code, which is like 365, 66, and 67. But coming out of plug 60, they are fan C, uh, so 365C, and coming out of plug 61 uh, is 365D. Uh, so that can be an easy indicator to help guide you as to which fans are the correct one down there, if you're not sure. All right, using the wire code, we found this one. now. The bearings are absolutely gone in this thing, clunk, clunk, clunk. But we come down here, and just like over in the control panel, we have a 366 C, 65 and 67, all of them C termination. So this is our correct motor. Something I recommend with these, whenever you do the motor, just go ahead and do the fan blades. These things are expensive to begin with, and you're talking, you know, six, eight, hundred, a thousand dollar fan motors and the blades are usually a couple hundred bucks if that. You will spend more time and man hours trying to salvage that blade and take it with you to use it on the other one than just destroying it or letting it go and getting a new one. Besides, a lot of things what can happen, this fiberglass gets so worn and so brittle that it gets bad and when the bearings get that bad, this one hasn't done it, but a lot of times it'll rub the sides and it'll eat into the fan blade. At that point, you just you just need to change it because next thing it'll happen, you'll have a new motor, and then your fan will break or get out of balance, and that bad blade will then rattle so much it'll wear the bearings out in your brand new motor. I want to thank Phil Pulse for sponsoring this video, and I definitely want to say for those of you who are small business, especially, and you got a crew trying to expand, and maybe you haven't quite switched to a software yet, or maybe the one you have just doesn't really have a lot of features to it, you should really look at investing in a good automated dispatching and work order and service software and Michael over at Phil Pulse can definitely help you out with that I highly recommend you guys check them out and talk to them they've got a good system and when you have a technician that can easily uh, move work order statuses around in the field and move things to complete and get that uh, the streamlined billing service it's really going to help streamline your business and look at it, talk to them, see what you think, your choice. I appreciate the sponsorship. We'll move on. Quick recovery updates. Uh, we are right at an hour in. We've only built uh, 121 pounds. We started at 83 pounds of pressure on the tank. Honestly, that's phenomenal. Uh, we did get out of liquid already. Uh, that happened earlier, so I did uh, turn the knob to the acceleration point, which is B. From what I was reading in the manual and stuff, B is supposed to be an acceleration mode for a vapor only recovery. Now, I don't know exactly how all that changes inside, but point is, I've been running on that for probably 30 minutes solid. This tank has gotten a lot of weight in it, it's heavy enough, I can't even pick it up now. So we're, we're moving quick on the recovery, it's, it's looking really well, the tank is not hot at all. It's only slightly warm to the touch. It took us right at about five hours total between yesterday afternoon and today. 
and we were able to pull this system down got it into a vacuum with a recovery and we got the 230 pounds out yesterday we were between 85 90 degrees outside our tank never got above 125 pounds of pressure and then this morning we never got above like 90 pounds usually we have to use a sub cooler otherwise it gets just way too hot especially with the sun hitting it it was just the same way yesterday as well so the fact that we could do all of that and still maintain that level of pressure is great that being said that's going to be a legitimate option for me to not have to use that sub cooler as much and heck just that recovery machine alone does a good enough job sub cooling it to where it'll take care of itself This time in the ring, we have the Navic vacuum gauge going up against the True Blue. We're gonna see what these microns look like and how they compare. We are gonna go ahead and do the cores again. The system did run for a few hours before we shut it down to do this repair. Uh, this is another common spot I try to pull from, so I'm curious to see if it does any better. Down there, we had to pull that freaking housing apart, and I just don't feel like doing that right now. I'm gonna let it roll. Yep, we're going good. It ought to be a much faster vacuum than the last one. We didn't have it open for two freaking weeks. Well, we got a foul on the play. We're gonna have to delay this action. Blue Vac apparently got no batteries and I don't really have the time to fix it now. So we'll do this test another day. In the meantime, looking pretty good on vacuum so far. Sucking it on down. Vacuum starting to stall out. So I'm gonna stop right here. We're going to do an oil change. That way we can try to speed this up a little bit more. So, so far, it, just that oil that we did pulled it down to about 1450, which is honestly really nice. I think it's a good thing. I do need to point out that this will void your warranty if you use the wrong oil. So if you don't use that 48 weight blue oil during your warranty period. Vacuum pulled down really good. We ended up staying late Friday to finish vacuum and charging. We got all that back in the system. We're about to calibrate the valves now. So he's gonna put it into a service mode. And then from there, we'll be able to uh, do a startup. So from there, I'll let you do that. So right now, he's driving it all the way open. That noise you hear is when it's bottomed out. That's perfectly fine. That's not the noise I'm worried about. Where it is a problem is if it makes a noise similar to that while it's in the mid position, that's when you ought to be concerned. So on the controller, it would have read zero up front, so we have to change it to 100, which because we're calibrating it, we're already in the 100 position. So now we're ready to go to zero. We'll go dead silent, just like that. You can see it actuating down. there at bottoms. We are calibrated, it looks good. We have nice smooth even travel. This valve, it'll be good to go. Now we just gotta do one more. We'll do the startup, we'll be good. We have system one, system two shut down. We wanna load up circuit three. So the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna get it on. Then we're gonna shut the other chillers down once it stabilizes. That'll put more load to this particular machine. As it loads up, then we'll let the other circuits come in and help carry the load. But I really wanna see circuit three stage up fully. Flip system switch. I think they should have already enabled it. Uh, we still have a flow switch shut down. So let me call the engineer, let them know we're ready for this chiller. Well, we're waiting on the chiller to turn on. So we did a, I guess you could call it a control test. I don't know. When he did the charging, it took him 39 minutes to completely move all the liquid over using the push pull, then switch over and do the rest of the vapor and pull the tank down into a little bit of a vacuum in 39 minutes. That Navic four cylinder pump is just an absolute hoss when it comes to moving refrigerant. And the fact that it was able to do that full recovery with no subcooler like that or external subcooler, it still just, just boggles my mind. That's 
that's going to be a great upgrade. If you're really needing a solid machine, I feel completely comfortable recommending that one in every way in any generic commercial use. The vacuum pump, you know, fine. You know, there can be an argument made for it's a little overkill for most of your situations. It's really meant for the larger equipment. But that recovery machine is meant for anything heavy commercial, hands down. I mean, it's, it's, it will do the job. So we have a pretty decent load so far, but it's a really cool day. And so our, our loads, this, these values are a little higher than they actually are. We're just now coming up on line. So we're looking really good on our pressures though. Our superheats are looking fine. Uh, discharge superheat starting to come up. We don't have, we're only at 43% speed so far. But our flash tank is showing level now. Before we were sitting at like 0% and eventually we just ran our feed valve to 100%. It just, it never actually got there. And our suction superheat, see we're backing off already with a 10 degree set point. Is it 10 or 12 on this one? We're looking really good. I got all the other chillers shut off. We're putting a really nice load on it. So we got a 47, 50 incoming. We're slowly coming up on it. We're gonna go to circuit three. Uh, pressures look really nice. Coming out of super heat's maintaining with uh, 11 degrees. Again, we're, we're trying to pull down, so we're gonna have a little bit lower saturation temp. We come down to discharge super heat. We look really solid. Granted, we have a very cool day today, so we're not having to do much on the condenser. We're at 100 percent speed our economizer is enabled uh, liquid level we're maintaining 10 percent with a 60 percent valve at full load that's wonderful now our suction superheat is doing spot on uh, before we were up above 20 degrees and we were running 100 percent valve because our flash tank wasn't filling up so now our drain valve able to maintain 10 degrees at 60 percent valve perfectly happy with that those are the main things i'm really looking at when I'm, when I'm trying to judge a system is where's my uh, drain valve compared to superheat, where's my flash tank compared to feed valve. This is a very strong indicator to start to troubleshoot from. You mix that with where your speed and economizer is, you can start piecing the puzzle together from there, trying to verify whether you've got good heat transfer, whether you've got good uh, charge values, and you start working your way through the system. We look really solid. We're going to close this one out. See you on the next one, guys. MTT. Thank you.